All right, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to read input from the user when they type something on their keyboard. So in order to do this, we're going to be using another class from our Java API. That's going to be the scanner class. So we can use the scanner class to read keyboard input. Uh, first, we're going to need to make an object of our scanner class. So you can kind of think of that like making an object of the string class, basically just uh, some uh, string literal that we put into a variable. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be creating one of those objects, and we're going to be specifying that the input will be read from uh, system.in. So system.in is what we use for keyboard input. So it's kind of the, the opposite of what we've seen for printing something from the computer to the uh, console, or essentially to the monitor, which was that system.out. So once we've created our scanner, we're telling it to read from system.in. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and use some methods of the scanner class uh, with the, uh, that newly created object. So we've got an example here where we're going to use one of the methods of the scanner class, which is going to be the next int method. So whenever we encounter one of these methods from the scanner class, what this is going to tell the program to do is to stop and wait until the user has entered uh, some value that matches with what it's expecting. So in this case, it's going to be expecting an integer value. So we've got uh, some variable that's going to end up holding that user input. So we need somewhere to store what the user gives us. So we've created this int number. And we're going to uh, initialize it to zero. So we're just initializing it to some kind of dummy value that we intend to replace fairly soon. We then see the line where we're actually creating our scanner object. So you can see that the class type or the data type is going to be scanner. A pretty typical name that we give this, uh, this object is going to be keyboard. And then we're going to say that it's equal to a new scanner. And then we specify that we're going to do system.in. So there's a couple of things going on there. We're using this new keyword. Uh, basically, this is how we indicate that we're going to be making an object. Uh, we then have the name of the object again, so we see, or the name of the class again, so we see scanner being used a second time. Uh, but then we also have a pair of parentheses, and we're putting something into those parentheses. So uh, one of the general rules of thumb is that whenever you see a pair of parentheses like this, there's a pretty good chance that what's going on there is a method call. So in this case, we're calling some kind of method related to our scanner class that allows us to go about making it. And so precisely what that method is, uh, something that I will address a little bit later. But for now, just understand that this method that we see right here is essentially telling us that we want to go ahead and create this object. And so the way that we want to create this object or the, the formatting of this object that we're creating, uh, we can specify that by putting something into those parentheses. So in this case, that's basically uh, saying this is what we want to scan. So we're trying to scan for our keyboard input or something from system.in. So then we'll go ahead and let the user know that the program is waiting for some input. So we're essentially going to have some kind of prompt to the user. We're going to print something to the console that tells them, hey, we need you to enter some kind of value or to provide some kind of uh, information to us. So in this case, we're saying enter an integer value. And then on the line right after that, you're going to see where we do our keyboard object. And then you have dot and then next end. So that's very similar to when we saw some of the uh, methods for the string class that we're using on objects of our string. So in this case, we're using uh, some methods that come from the scanner class on objects of scanner. So in this case, we're doing keyboard dot next int. And we have that pair of parentheses, again, indicating that we're calling a method. Um, essentially, what this is going to do is, uh, as we noted before, it's going to wait uh, have the program wait until the user enters an integer value. Uh, once they've entered that value, we're going to kind of uh, get a hold of that value, and then we can go ahead and store that into a uh, number. So we'll assign it to our number variable. So let's go ahead and start writing a little bit of code for this. So we'll come over here. We're going to go ahead and create a new Java application. And for this one, uh, if you recall from a couple of videos ago, we created a program that we called uh, Greeting. So I want to go ahead and uh, kind of remake that program, 
but we're going to modify it now so that whenever we uh, provide that greeting, we're going to do it based on a name that the user gives us. So that way then, every time we run it, if it's being ran by a different user, they can just type in their own name, and then the output from the program will be different. So for this one, we're going uh, to call this user greeting. So we're going to finish that. We'll then go ahead and kind of clean this up a little bit. And since we did just talk a little bit about documentation comments and the usefulness of being able to put in a general description here, for this particular program, I will go ahead and take advantage of this. I'll go ahead and add a little comment right here and say the purpose of this program is to display a greeting to the user based on some input. I'll then go ahead and adjust the style. I'm going to go ahead and remove this documentation comment at least. Just the style here. And then right here, what I'm going to go ahead and do for this one is I need two things. So there are going to be two variables that I'm concerned with. Uh, one of those is going to be the variable that will hold the input that I get from the user. So for that one, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called, uh, whose data type will be string. And then the name that I'm going to give it, uh, since this is going to be used to hold whatever name that the user gives us, I'm going to call it name. Just be equal to some empty string for now. So just initially have nothing inside of it. We will then go ahead and uh, create that scanner object. So we're going to have scanner. We'll call it keyboard. And say this is equal to a new scanner. And then we specifically want the scanner to be reading from our keyboard from keyboard input, so that's going to be system.in. And once we've done this, you'll notice that this is a complete statement. Everything about it should be fine, but we're getting an error. So if we take a quick look at this, it's going to say that we cannot find symbol uh, class scanner, so it doesn't know what scanner is. And the reason for that is because within the scope of this program, what we've got right here, we cannot immediately see every single class that comes from the Java API. We only really have access to so much by default. Uh, and in this case, with this scanner that we have right here, this is not something that we immediately have access to by default. So there's something else that we need to do with our program so that we can specify what scanner is supposed to mean. So if we take a look over here. We'll kind of wrap up a little bit about the scanner class. So there's going to be a couple of different methods that we're going to be using to read various types of input. So we've got things like next byte, next double, next float. Uh, we've got next int that we saw a quick example of before. Uh, we then also have things like next long, next short, and we have one called next line. So the first six are fairly straightforward based on the names of the methods. Uh, we can use those to read numeric input of some specific data type. So you can see it for each one of the six different numeric data types. Uh, but the seventh one, that last method that we have there, uh, that's going to be used to read an entire line of input from the user, and it's going to be interpreted as a string. So since we noted before that the name that we want to get from the user is going to be a string, it would make sense that this next line method is what we're going to end up using. So we'll keep that in mind when we get to that part of our program. But the other thing we need to address is making sure that it recognizes what the scanner class actually is. So before we can actually use the scanner class in our programs, we're actually going to need to do what is known as an import. So we're going to need to import the scanner class from somewhere in the Java API. And we need to also make sure that we're getting it from the correct package in the Java API. So the scanner class is going to come from the util package. Uh, you'll notice as we go through a couple of different examples throughout uh, not just this section, but uh, many other sections. Uh, you will encounter a couple of different classes that come from that util package. So this import statement is going to be added to our program. It's going to be at the very top uh, between the package statement. So the package statement will always be the very first line. Underneath that, we're going to include our import statement. So we can see import uh, java.util.scanner. So that's our import that's needed for the scanner class. And then underneath that import, is where we have our actual class. So we've got our header and our body for it. So 
let's come over to NetBeans and let's go ahead and add in this import statement. So we'll go ahead and keep this documentation comment along with our class. So really the kind of the, the entire body of our program that it corresponds to. And we'll go ahead and add our import statement right here. So we're gonna say import uh, java.util.scanner. Go ahead and save that. And so now when we do that, we can see that scanner is correctly recognized in this program. So now we can go ahead and add on to this with the remaining couple of lines for our program. So the next thing we need is some prompt to the user to let them know uh, that we are expecting some kind of input. So we're going to go ahead and say system.out.print. And we'll go ahead and say please enter your name. We'll do a colon and a space. So we'll leave a little room at the very end of this where they can go ahead and type in their name. We'll then go ahead and use this name variable that we have right here as uh, our storage space for whatever the user enters. So we'll do name equals, we'll do keyboard.nextLine. So recall that we want to go ahead and use that next line method to get some string of user input. So we'll go ahead and take that and we're going to store it into this name variable. And then finally, what we want to go ahead and do is just print that out to the console. So we're going to say system.out.println. And we'll go ahead and say hello. And then we'll go ahead and also add on their name. So we're just going to add whatever the contents of name are. And then we'll also add some punctuation at the very end. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll go ahead and run this. So once we have this running, it's going to go ahead and display this prompt right here. So it's going to say, please enter your name. And you'll notice that the program stops executing. So it's kind of just uh, sitting here, just waiting for us to enter something. So we'll go ahead and type in a name. So in my case, I'll just type in my name. And then what you need to do to let it know that you've finished uh, providing some input is just push the enter key. So when you do that, it will then go ahead and continue to execute the rest of the program. In this case, it's going to go ahead and print out this statement that we have right after that. So it's going to take the contents of name, which is whatever I just typed in right there, and it's going to go ahead and print that to the console. So in this case, it's going to say, hello, Brandon. Uh, so you'll also probably notice that I used a print method here and a print line method right here. The reason for that is because of the fact that anytime you have to give any kind of input, since you have to push the enter key for it to recognize that you're done providing some input, uh, you don't really need to use the print line right here. It's kind of unnecessary. So typically I just leave that off for uh, prompts where we're expecting some user input. Uh, but I do go ahead and keep it here since I do want to go ahead and just have a new line character right here to uh, have this build successful, we're up to the next line at the very end. All right, so we've seen a couple of methods for different numeric data types. We've also done an example, so we can actually see what that next line method is like, uh, being able to uh, get a string of user input. But you might notice that there is a particular data type that is conveniently missing from the, the set of methods that we have to work with, which would be for characters. So what exactly should we do if we want to get some input from the program uh, for a program, so something from the user, but it should only be a single character of input. So if we want to read a single character uh, using the scanner class, we can actually make use out of both the next line method, so that we can go ahead and read an entire string, and then we can use the char at method of the string class to get uh, whatever character it is that we're interested in. So in most cases, that's probably going to be the character at the very beginning. So that'd be the zeroth character of that string. So we can see an example of this right here, where we've got our uh, initial string, we'll call it input. It's going to be equal to just an empty string. So still just giving it some dummy value uh, to start off with. We then have our print statement where we ask the user for some input. So our little prompt there. So we're saying, please input yes or no. Uh, we try to make it very clear to them that what we're looking for is just either the letter Y or the letter N. 
Uh, we then go ahead and use that call to next line. So we can go ahead and get the string of input. Uh, so in some cases they might type in just the full word yes or the full word no. Totally fine because of the fact that the very, uh, the very next line we're gonna do input.char at zero. So we're gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the input that they gave us. We're going to access or just grab the zeroth character from it and we'll go ahead and store that into a different variable. So ideally we need to make sure that we also have uh, this answer variable initialized somewhere. So let's go ahead and add on a little bit to what we have up here. So let's say in addition to this, we have some uh, extra prompt where we're going to ask them to uh, input either a yes or no or something. So to do that, we would include a few more things. So let's say we want to use a separate string to hold this other piece of input. So we're going to say string input equals uh, an empty string initially. We'll then also go ahead and create our char, call this answer. This will be initially just an empty char. Uh, there's a little bit of a trick to this though, which is that uh, chars can't actually be empty. So they're a little bit different from strings in that way. So usually what I'll use as my own kind of dummy value for a char is to just put the character for zero inside of there. Uh, another option would be just a single space character. So once we've got that, let's say maybe after this print statement right here, We'll go ahead and do another portion. So we'll do system.out system.out.print. Say please enter yes or no. We can then go ahead and get that from the user. So we're going to say input is equal to our keyboard. So we're just going to use the same object, this keyboard object that we have. And just go ahead and call the next line method on it again. And then after that, once we've got that input, we want to go ahead and take the zeroth character and put that into this answer char variable. So I'm going to say answer is equal to our input dot char at, and we want to do position zero. And then later, if you wanted to, we could go ahead and do something with that answer but that's going to be dependent on if they give us a Y or an N, a yes or a no. So we'll kind of save what should come after this for when we get into conditional coding a little bit later. So to kind of start wrapping up on keyboard input, I want to take a look at one other problem that we could run into. So this one's going to be a little bit more complex than uh, what we just saw. So whenever we start mixing calls with our scanner object, so if we have a mixture of calls to say maybe uh, next int and next line, uh, there's an internal detail about how these method calls behave in relation to one another that must be taken into consideration. So let's consider the following mixture of calls. So in this case, we've got this first one here where we're asking you to print your student ID. We'll then go ahead and grab that store that into a variable, probably an int variable, called student ID. Uh, we'll then have a second prompt, so a second request, saying please enter your name, and then we'll have a call to next line. But if we try to run this program and actually follow these uh, the, the set of steps when it's executing, we'll notice that the program does not wait for you to enter a value for the name. So you can enter a name or a value for the student ID. When you push enter, it will kind of immediately skip over the part where it's waiting for a name and just immediately move on to the next part. And the problem with that has to do with what is known as the keyboard buffer. So before I get into more details about that keyboard buffer and how we go about resolving this problem, let's go ahead and start creating the code for this. So let's say that in addition to all of this, we include some of the part right here where we're going to ask for a student ID. So let's say that we've got another string right here. We'll call this one uh, ID input. So we'll use this one to hold the input from the user related to their student ID. Uh, actually, we'll be able to use this one as an int. So let's use, let's actually just use what they have right here now that I'm thinking about this. So we'll just go ahead and use uh, the student ID variable. 
and that'll be an integer. So I'll do int, and then I'll say student ID. And initially, we'll just go ahead and set this to something like zero and save that. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we've got this part right here. We're asking for their name. So then just before that, we'll do system.out.print. And we'll say, please enter your student ID. And then right after, we'll go ahead and say student ID is equal to our keyboard. And now we'll go ahead and use one of those other methods. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the next int method. So we'll go ahead and save this, and we will try to run it. Uh, let's go ahead and comment this extra little part out for now. So we have this prompt right here asking to enter our student ID. So we'll just make up some number real quick, do one, two, three, four. Go ahead and push enter and it will move to the next one so it'll show the next prompt it'll print that to the console saying please enter your name but it's not going to wait so you'll notice that it does not sit here idly waiting for us to give it a name it just immediately moves on to the next part and unfortunately since we didn't give it a name it's just going to be that empty string so it's just, uh, just going to say hello and then nothing so we need to figure out how to fix this because obviously this is not how we want this program to work. So the keyboard buffer is going to be an extra storage space that is used to store our keystrokes. So that's going to also include whenever the user presses the enter key to signify the end of an input value. So if you're giving it a number say like something that's uh, going to be using the next int method uh, you do like the one two three four then you push the enter key but pushing the enter key is going to add a new line character to that keyboard buffer so that enter value the new line character that is not removed from the keyboard buffer whenever you're calling methods other than next line so we can see our example right here so where we had our keyboard dot next int so if the user enters a value, so say like the one, two, three, four that I entered, or maybe this uh, one through nine right here, and then they push enter, so we got that new line character, backslash n. After that value is read using the next int method and then stored into our student ID variable, it's going to leave behind that new line character. So that stays inside of the keyboard buffer. So to try to compensate for this, other methods are going to immediately skip any leading new line character. So if there's a new line character at the very start of the keyboard buffer, it's just going to ignore it. Uh, but that's for most methods. Next line does not do this. Uh, so next line does not skip leading new line characters. So to correct for this, we're just going to include a second call to uh, next line to just go ahead and uh, consume any of these unused or unneeded keystrokes. So we can see that right here. We've still got our uh, prompt saying, please enter your name. We then have a call to next line, but we're not going to store the, uh, the results of that, so what we get out of that, because of the fact that that's just there to consume that unused uh, new line character. That way then, when we get to the second call to next line, where we're waiting to assign that to name, the program will correctly kind of stop and wait for us to actually enter something. So go ahead and minimize this, come over here. And so what we need to go ahead and do is right here, go ahead and include that additional call. So we're going to say keyboard dot next line. And that should fix our problem. So if we go ahead and run this, so we'll go ahead and enter a student ID, say like one, two, three, four. So when I push enter in a second, it's going to take all of this, store that into student ID, it's going to be removed from the keyboard buffer. We'll then move over to this prompt right here saying, please enter your name. When we hit this line, so line 24 right here, uh, that's going to see the new line character. So it's going to read that out. And then we're going to come to this line. And at this point, the keyboard buffer will be empty again. So we can go ahead and type in something and then push enter. So do this. And now we can go ahead and enter a name. So again, I'll just give it my name, push enter. 
and then it can uh, correctly move on to the next line where it'll go ahead and print out the greeting, hello Brandon. All right, so this is going to wrap up everything for uh, reading keyboard input. Uh, getting into the next video, we're going to uh, take a look at another uh, class that we want to be importing into our programs. So this one's going to be related to an issue with precision, and we're going to be using the big decimal class.